Welcome to Swiftly Spoken, a fan-made Taylor Swift podcast in which we break down her lyrics, deep dive into full album retrospectives, and theorise about what may be coming next. As always, we are your hosts Lisa and Cameron, and this week we're going to be recapping every single detail we know about Midnight's up to now. Even though Taylor herself hasn't given us much more information since the album announcement, details from her official website, the album variants and photo shoot, and her latest appearances are actually a lot more revealing than they seem. We're going to be recapping all the plausible rumours surrounding the album, as well as discussing the possible easter eggs that we may have missed along the way. The first thing is it's is involving lyrical content of the album. So on Taylor's official site, there is a area where it allows us to access a clean version of the album. So the existence of a clean version of the album, of course, would imply that the standard album is going to have explicit lyrics on it. It's going to have swear words throughout. In the last few albums she has sworn, this is just another confirmation that there is going to be swear words on it. So that's interesting because I I love the clean version alternate lyrics. Like I think we've discussed previously. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm most excited about. Yeah. Is, yeah. We've discussed yeah, previously the ones for them. Ivy and they're so good. And I know they're only replacing because it's not really a swear word, but damn, it, she really goes for it. Like it's a violent blaze instead of a goddamn blaze. And just the, that mm. word replacement, the replacement. The fiercest of it. part of my life. That's it. Yeah. So Rather I'm. Goddamn. Yeah. Next up, we have the length of the album. This isn't really verified it's quite unconfirmed because it doesn't always work this way but according to what we can read on her website the album is only only going to be including one lp which usually standard vinyl only runs to about 44 minutes so it would seem that the album would be around 44 minutes long in total however you can cram in more minutes, but it just depends on the pressings and how good that is. Maybe you know more than me because I'm not. I don't really not, have any. I'm not overly, yeah, I'm not overly well versed in it. I know that it depends on like what speed. I think you have to play the vinyl because I remember there was a lot of discussion about the speed that you had to play the red vinyl on, and lots of people's record okay. players. I think it was 33 RPM. Lots of people's record players didn't have that, and people didn't really know. Intrigued though that it is only one because this would be like the first time ever that a Taylor album has only been on one. Okay, so you know, see, you know more than me because I don't have any of the vinyl, so I don't know. So, like, Reputation, 1989, Lover, they're all a couple? All all double. Okay. Yeah, they're all double vinyl. But to be fair, they're only about three, max four songs per side. Right. Um, So, and so I'm guessing that they maybe, maybe because of vinyl production, maybe it's easier at the moment to cram... Just cram That's more true. onto one because you're making less yeah. discs. I don't, I'm not too sure, but it would be the first one that technically is on one vinyl physical disc itself because all the others have been on double. But like I said, it each side is roughly mm. about three, four songs and it probably runs for about 10, 15 minutes, maybe each side, maybe 20 minutes max. So yeah, it's, it's interesting that that um, is the case. And is if that is the case, that it is going to be 44 minutes, that would probably be one of Taylor's shortest, especially recently. Definitely recently, even just there being 13 tracks, it's quite, it already points, because this is, it's pretty unconfirmed, it it would seem the way it reads that it's going to be just one, even, even so, just being 13 tracks after the last few releases, especially the Taylor's version releases that, you know, especially Red, Red, oh my god, (laughs) yeah, which is literally like a two hour long album, I'm kind of glad that it's more of a contained, we said this last time, but yeah, it feels, it feels a bit more like, I don't know, it just feels like there's maybe been more... Not that there's not thought put into longer track listing. No. But it seems like maybe there's more of a kind of, oh, you you're really picking the best ones rather than just, oh, I really like this song and I'm just going to put this on the track list as well. Mm. It feels a bit more crafted and, I don't know, I, I, I do prefer shorter track lists i've always found that anything above 13 i don't know it just feels a little like oh wow this is getting a little lot i quite like shorter condenser track lists i don't know why i just always have red taylor's version it makes sense but yeah. that was heft it was just a hefty album i just vividly remember finishing technically the original deluxe album and being like oh my god i've basically got to now sit for a nut you know like oh it was the best two hours of my life like i wasn't oh yeah was definitely like, wow. no we're like, not complaining i was thinking i'm only halfway through you know what i mean i was like oh my gosh i've literally got now like another album to get through of just new stuff let alone you know um all the older stuff so it's quite nice to have something that feels a bit more 
just slightly shorter and it feels it feels a bit more like the original taylor albums of like 1989 mm. and stuff that had shorter because at the time red was taylor's longest yeah. until lover yeah it was the longest longest track list but i quite like going back to the 13 track list like we kind of had during 1989 like you said it's not that we don't appreciate the long track list because obviously the vault is something incredible which we're so appreciative oh, of yeah. but it's it is interesting to look at how she has in the past got rid of these songs and not included them it always leaves you with that bittersweet feeling of oh what what what, what about the ones she left behind been, yeah. yeah but it really means that she's probably put quite a lot of thought into it like you said that's that's the reason really and that's it's going to be interesting because obviously she's picked out the stand the standout track yeah next we can talk about the tracks themselves a little bit more so last time when we spoke from what we know from the cover, what we can see is that there are 13 tracks, and at the moment we just have track names as placeholders, like track one, track two, track three, but it's basically confirmed-ish that those tracks are going to have their own names to them. In a recent TikTok, that the one that Taylor showed all the different editions uh, on the vinyls, you can see the track list and there's different lengths to each track they have been blurred out because obviously she knows that we're crazy and we'll literally zoom in like Mm. mad people they are definitely track names that aren't going to be just track one track two or you know things like that one theory that i had which i kind of would have loved and i mentioned this to you in private but also at the same time i understand why it can't work is that each track had the date of the midnight it was speaking about as its name see i would love this so would i, I. Would it's like taking this. the concept to the extreme and very mm. invasive personally because obviously mm. then you know exactly like where she was in her life who she was with mm. but it just it is like the pinnacle but of if, that kind of concept but i suppose there could still be an element of secrecy to it if if it was because the thing is there's a lot of taylor songs in general because obviously her lyrics are so vivid and so personal, mm. normally you can kind of roughly work out what she's talking about. Not in all cases, but in some cases, most like, oh, of yeah, the that's time, what that's mentioning. Yeah, um, yeah. And even with like Evermore folklore, that you know the references to kind of some of the stuff that happened during the late 1989 early Reputation era and things. Mm. Uh, but then, but this would make it so specific that I don't know whether because she's started to remove herself from understandably so yeah. discussing because mm-hmm. she doesn't really discuss what the songs are about really anymore like she she does but doesn't in a, it, like she does it with folklore nevermore it's she much more generic by saying these are all mm. yeah by saying like these are all fictional or folklore and there's elements of truth and you know what i mean like mm. she does talk about them but not in the way that she used to where she used to pretty openly kind of say oh yeah what well they're about just wouldn't let's really face name it names between that and the secret messages it was just very oh, yeah. which obviously it, it came to a point where it just wasn't feasible to continue on with that that's why i don't think this idea would be very feasible either because no. people would read far too much into it and not only that but how are you going to track on radio a song called july 18th 2012 you know what i mean yeah but yeah so it is a cute idea that we kind of spoke about but yeah it would be quite nice i but, think but yeah i think i think no, in re- yeah in, like reality and being realistic i don't think that it's a possible idea like thing to happen but it would be quite cool it would be quite definitely cool. But something that we also have to go on about a little bit here on a rant is that there's so many track lists going around at the moment on everything on Instagram, on Twitter. And honestly, the last thing that we're going to get is the track list. And purposefully so. The track list is given last to us so people don't leak songs and go looking for them. Literally, in in every single album cycle, track list is the last thing we ever get yeah the last thing we will get yeah so if you're seeing things and thinking that their song's going to be called i've I've seen such outlandish things over the last few days but then again what's what's the one what's the one that basically has been it was during what was the one that everyone thought reputation was eclipse eclipse yeah we got eclipse Uh, and then and then i think it came back is there like a turn kaleidoscope uh eternal yes yes yeah Yeah. that one came back during lover Mm. again there's always rumors going around yeah i hope one day she actually writes a song called eternal or eclipse (laughs) just so that people shut up and it would be funny honestly it would be very funny The special editions themselves have given us a lot of information as well because they really have added to the aesthetic of the era. 
which has been built up upon through the appearances as well and through these photo shoots and in general we can say that it has quite a retro vibe and there's a lot of thought and detail been put into a lot of things so for example the logo that can be seen the republic uh, her, her record labels logo that can be seen used on both the vinyl and the cassettes is from like the 90s it's their 90s 2000 logo like the earliest logo that they have so that's a little detail that kind of shows us that the sound is not going to be or at least she doesn't want to emulate the sound of today shall we say but more of like a retro vibe to it Another thing is the track list on the album cover. I know we discussed this quite a lot and we had a lot of interesting comments from a lot of you guys as well about the track list being featured on the album cover. Some people love it, some people hate it. It is something that was around and now we know was quite famous and quite used in the 50s to the 70s. So again, that could be hinting towards the vibe of the album. And honestly, now that I've sat with it and seen it so much, I kind of love it. There was a comment that someone said that was saying like, Taylor doesn't follow trends. And I was like, no, she doesn't. She starts them. And I really think that this could kick off again. I I quite love it now. To be fair, I was thinking, I've kind of spent some time thinking about it as well. And Moran Morris, her debut album Hero, that had its track list on the cover as well. Interesting. So like even on the CD, um, it doesn't have the track list on the back. Like okay. the back doesn't have a track, right, the track right, right. is on the cover. So what the is front. the back of the so, yeah. CD? Because I keep wondering what's going to be on the it's back. It's just like a photo. It's just a photo from the photo shoot. It's not right. So like so kind of it, like flips. It's a <laughs> yeah. It's it's weird. It's like yeah. It's, it's it's like a back. It's like a back cover photo that you would expect on the back of a CD with the track list. Right. But obviously the track list on the front. Because I was thinking, oh, are there any other albums that I know of? Mm. Uh, modern albums. And yeah, Maria Morris's Hero is the only one that I could think of from people I know or I'm a fan of, mm. um, that have put the track list on the cover. Because it is an unusual thing to do. And also, she's kind of really emulated those kind of vintage albums by the fact that the cover is like a, in the corner and not mm-hmm. the full yep. image, um, which Maren Morris didn't do. The cover is the full image, it just has the track list. So no, it's in, it is interesting, and, and I think that's an interesting point, that yeah, Taylor has never really followed trends and has always gone a... You suddenly think, oh, this is what Taylor does, and then she flips it and changes it all again. Right. So, you know, we've we've all thought, oh, Taylor isn't putting uh, album covers on her, album titles, sorry, on her covers anymore. And then guess what? She goes and does it. <laughs> yeah. You can never really expect what is next with Taylor. She always Definitely. changes it up. The yeah. fact that when Folklore came out, it was like, oh, this hasn't got a, a, a like, album title on or it. Or her name. Was like, oh. mm. Or her name. We were like, oh, this is really weird. Um, because Lover it didn't have a name, yeah, and we that's were kind it. of like, oh, and we were like, okay. oh, it's not got a name on it. And then yeah. folklore is like, oh, it didn't have that. And then obviously we didn't get that for Evermore, te- uh, Red, or Fe- Fearless, both the Taylor's versions. And now we've got it again. It's just a bit like, oh, but we've got the track list as well, as well as the name. With the special editions and the release of them, I really fell in love with the cover. I don't know, it just really works for me. I really got used to it th- yeah, quickly. I think, yeah, I think what's quite important to mention though is there's that image going round of like the kind of the full photo in quotation marks oh yes of the cover something else to debunk Mm. yeah fluffy coat which is an edit it's just like the fearless taylor's version one where you can see her legs in the shorts yeah it's an ai Um, edit at that yeah yeah Yeah, it's like a fan edit and but people are taking it as like legitimate yes i think lots of people generally because sometimes they're like the, the people realize that that isn't the photo yeah <laughs> like, it's an edit um it's like have you seen how big her hands look in that edit right. they are insane yeah. they're massive i'm like oh my gosh um yeah it's interesting though because it's quite cool of what oh yeah it's, it's interesting to wonder what she is wearing and that's what true the full photo would be maybe the photo shoot isn't. will reveal more but yeah it's unfortunate how Hopefully things on the internet kind of do get spread around very very quickly and they're mislabeled and then like information goes around that we're here to debunk but uh yeah unfortunately it does look cool but at the same time because i believed it at first as well i think we sent it to each other and we were like what and i was like oh my god look at this yeah there's something off about this and then yeah we both realized it was unfortunately yeah but what is quite cool though about the official cover the uh, moonstone blue is um the lighter because obviously Joe, Joe Alwyn, Taylor's boyfriend, um, mm-hmm. in one of the interviews that he did uh, for like promo for like conversation with friends, he said that he collects vintage lighters. 
So um, I wonder if yes. that one hidden is Easter egg. One of his vintage, <laughs> yeah, one of his vintage lighters. Um, I would say probably, to be honest with you, which is mm. a nice little, you know, it's a nice little hint. Not obviously for us, but between them, and who knows, maybe te- maybe maybe Taylor has collaborated once again with Joe on the album. Which I was just about to say for that. you, Do you think that, that, is that would be amazing because you're a Joe Alwyn oh, yeah. fan. I know. <laughs> oh, I seem to love all of anything that Joe Alwyn writes. I'm just like, oh my god. So I would love more Taylor and Joe music, and I could see that definitely being the case. Do you think I that would. they would keep? I, I agree. The pseudonym. <sighs> William Bowery. Oh, I do think so. Yeah, I, I do. I do. I do. Yeah. Mm. Even though everyone knows, it just I don't know. It still removes. That. It's kind of yeah. It it kind of removes it f- to a certain extent. At the same time, now that we all know and people expect it, perhaps to steer away from, you know, clickbaity things, maybe she'll she'll steer away from it. But either way, I I'll be glad either way. Honestly, like if we get Taylor yeah, solo work, really... we know it's going to be amazing. And if we get yeah. Joe collab here and there that will the way he has collaborated before it's been great so yeah great yeah and then talking about collaborations i guess then who do you think that it will be jack and aaron heavy again well this is something that we have no idea about at the moment and a lot of people kind of antsy about that like why hasn't she tagged people but obviously in this era it seems like taylor is going back to her more of a gradual rollout which makes sense for eras we've been quite spoiled over the last four album releases because for taylor's version she kind of told us everything Ten, yeah. um forevermore and folklore they were one well less than one day like six hours between yeah. announcement and release but uh i do think we'll get information about collaborators further along the line and i'm feeling perhaps a departure from just just yeah. Jack. I feel and like Jack Aaron. will still be there. I don't think she'll ever get rid of Jack. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe and we'll I, get like a couple now... of tracks with Aaron and Jack, but maybe yeah. maybe more of a branching out. Because what about people like Christopher Rowe? Because she seems True. to really trust him. Yeah, trusted him in the Taylor's version. If she wants to go down the country route, Christopher Rowe is a big name that we can definitely mention because she... he's basically become the Nathan, Nathan Chapman. Chapman. Like yeah. he does the Nathan <laughs> Chapman songs. Definitely, yeah. So I'm I'm intrigued whether yeah she'll use if he is just exclusively because he's never done anything before, but it seems like he is now the kind of figure stone and centerpiece of the Taylor's mm. version production. Definitely. You know what I mean? So it's interesting whether he is just exclusively Taylor's version or whether she'll kind of bring him on for this now or whether she's just going to stick with Jack and Aaron, maybe bring in other people that she's collaborated with before. But yeah, it really depends on the sound because if the sound is very much folklore evermore sound, yeah, I do think a continuation of previous producers. Yeah. However, I think that if there's a slight departure from that sound, which I really hope there is, then we'll have a bit of a mix up with the producers because I do like every so often Taylor like changing up with certain producers. Some work way better than others, for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, we know who you're it, it referring to. It is quite to. nice to hear. <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, but it is quite nice sometimes to hear Taylor in a different. I don't know, just hear someone a different producer how they produce Taylor music because it is done totally differently. Yeah, for sure. And uh, she adapts as well, uh, depending on yeah. on that as well. But yeah, there was a post going around, which again, we can't really say how verifiable this is, because it's, you know, these people who are insiders that come up with things, and sometimes it sticks and it lands, and then people believe it. But mm. there was a post that was going around a long time ago, and they basically said in the post that this album was going to be very ethereal. It was going to have 13 tracks, oh, yeah, and it was going so. to be very collaborative, not only production-wise, yes. but also artist wise and a lot of female collaborations as well according yeah. again this is just a rumored post coincidentally it does seem quite like ethereal the vibe coincidentally it, it also does have 13 tracks but again anyone could kind of guess that and and yeah ha- and be lucky enough to, for it to be it's true very likely that that would probably stick and be true yeah yeah but i would like to see some collaborations with female artists and female produ- producers that would be really interesting honestly and to be fair in her vma speech she did mention about female um directors and producers and artists and stuff and that it was the most they've been or something like that so maybe that is something yeah. that she was possibly hinting at about female led projects um, so maybe that would be nice. It would be nice if um, 
that was the case. But then it obviously would that would nice. mean that we would have we wouldn't have Jack, <laughs> and I love Jack and Taylor. I'm not against a, a mixed bag of things for sure, and oh, getting less. Yeah, me too. If we have, I don't know. It, I suppose then hmm. mentioning then collaborators. Who do you think then? Like collaborators in, in terms of artists, because I'm 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 not too sure about. It's producers, hard. But, like, it's really artists. hard. Do you think it is hard because we know so little of the sound? If only we would have had a single, we could really. Yeah, once that single does come out, yeah. if it if it if it comes out at all, I think we can really delve properly into what we think or who we think the sound could fit with. But with no, with just the aesthetics, it's hard to say. I have no idea. Yeah. I obviously the, have the... wishful thinking, but I have no idea. Did really. you see the like nineteen seventy five rumors? They've been debunked. Matt, yes, um, the lead singer of nineteen seventy five, is like, no, I'm not. I'm not on it. Yeah, <laughs> which is yeah. a shame. But um, but no. It's, yeah, it but again, a lot a lot of people will, will run with things very easily, especially at this time in an album release cycle, and we don't oh, know yeah. much. People will blow up things. That's why we're kind of here doing the rumor recap and, and kind of debunking some and and laying a foundation for others. But yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see, I guess. But I do think this it really could go either way. No collaborations at all. Speak nowish or completely yeah. collaborative. From the special editions, we can also get some more information, which again could just be coincidences. But we thought we'd mention because it is interesting and it's it's what we've got for now. So from the Blood Moon edition, it's interesting to note that there is a Blood Moon this year that is on October the 9th. So we know that Taylor sometimes is very purposeful with things and other times it's just a coincidence. But could this mean that perhaps something may be happening the weekend of October the 7th? Maybe, maybe. I don't know whether... I don't know whether same... It's hard to know whether that is an intentional Easter egg or purely... Yeah, I mean, it's just a, a an aesthetic name. Yeah. At the same time, October the 7th would be the first weekend after the Grammy cut-off date, uh, so she wouldn't be in competition with herself, although there are ways for her to release something now and not have it be in competition with herself as long as the album that the single is released with comes out after the al- the Grammy cut-off. Maybe she doesn't want to kind of distract from all too well risk just it, now, yeah. risk it, so maybe. I don't know, I just thought it was an interesting detail. But going into things that are a bit more confirmed... Uh, from the jade green version, for example, a lot of people have pointed out some Easter eggs that may or may not be Easter eggs. What is going on, what we can see is that it would seem that a lot of 70s aesthetic is being laid out before us. So, for example, the piano in the jade green version is rumoured to be a Wurlitzer 200 series piano, which apparently is from, like, the 70s. But just in general, the aesthetic of all of them, the Moonstone and Mahogany uh, covers as well, they have a, they're quite zoomed in on her face. And what we can see, basically, the makeup, in makeup terms, is the blue eyeshadow, which, again, it was a 60s staple, but it also was quite a staple in the 70s as well, with more of a disco or a metallic twist to it, which is what it seems like she's wearing in those... Mm. In, in that photo shoot. So again, it's building up on this retro aesthetic. The phone that she's holding is also like yeah. one of those old kind of phones. And and even even when you think of the recent, uh, just pulling it very recently, the LA Times photo shoot that she's done, that outfit is just very like 70s, the stripes. The TikTok where she showed the covers of the vinyl. Again, the stripe. You know, I don't know, it just, it does feel very cohesive in terms of that kind of the aesthetic that she's going for this very 70s vintage yellows and brown maybe she's pointing towards that this is going to be a sound that was generally inspired by the 70s but in the same way that 1989 was inspired and emulated the 80s synth sounds and yes, maybe, yes. in a way it would make sense a lot of 70s music at the moment has become quite popular on tiktok especially like we have angel eyes by abba which is a big song at the moment on tiktok um we have love grows where my rosemary goes um which that was released in 1971 the abba song was 1979 so that's the kind of music we're talking about which people seem to be latching onto at the moment if it's true what would would you like that would you not like that how do you feel about kind of so i think so yeah i think i always love it when taylor changes up sound a little bit um, which is why I would really like a departure from 
the kind of folklore evermore sound not because i don't like it because i love it um i would just really like something mm. a bit different just to see because it's just so interesting to hear taylor trying out a new sound you know when i think of songs like ready for it like i just remember being like oh my god like this is so different but so oh, cool. it was such a shock and then it really was and then that was such a de- that was such a departure from like shake it off which was such a departure from you know all too well which was then also a big departure mm. from you know tim mcgraw and picture to burn like it, it's just that's the one thing i love about taylor's discography is that everything is so different and no one can ever say oh she just puts out because people like to use the oh she just writes songs about her exes which is obviously a load of rubbish but no one ever says mm. oh all of her songs are the same or she's just been creating that the same true. song over because she hasn't because no one can ever say that because you listen to debut that is totally different to 989 which is totally different to rap that's totally different to speak now that's totally different to folklore you know like they're just all very the only ones that are similar which was purposeful is folklore and evermore but even within themselves those two are still distinct because evermore has a bit more of an experimental yeah. kind of sound so i'd very much like her to sound again and yeah. try out something new i'm not very well versed in 70s music so i don't really if it's something that i would like yeah but to be fair even like 80s music you know some of it is pretty awful <laughs> um but you know taylor was inspired by just the sounds and you know th- that the 1989 album doesn't sound like an outdated 80s song it sounds the total opposite it sounds incredibly modern and fresh just you know has certain reference points to 80s aesthetics and sounds of course so um yeah hopefully we get something a bit different if you want to hear a bit more from 70s music then i do recommend this is kind of more of a personal thing than than the whole general aesthetic of of the 70s Mm. but i do recommend checking out the guardians of the galaxy volume one soundtrack because that is inspired by late 60s 70s music and it is so good like i love that music Mm. i love that soundtrack it's one of the best film soundtracks that's probably me being very basic but for me i do really love it and um yeah perhaps we can have a loose inspiration and there's a lot of songs that you will recognize straight away and be like okay if she does what she did with the 1980s one and kind of incorporate some of the sound i think it's going to be really cool okay so now we're quickly going to discuss some of the missed easter eggs so far that have kind of possibly hinted to midnights and taylor announcing midnights so the first one is upon this loves taylor's versions obviously release the instagram caption and the caption in general um announcing the release of this love said like out at midnight and midnight itself was kind of spaced like double spaced out that so it made it stand out against all of the other kind of uh, words in that caption which i personally i'm not a big easter egg i very rarely believe yeah. the easter eggs because some of them are just so over the top taylor with her easter eggs is, makes them very clear yeah they're normally incredibly obvious um sometimes they're a little bit clever and they, they normally are clever but they are obvious like i just always think back to <laughs> the love album title i know in the me music video. i know it was the most obvious thing ever and she was like oh no one spotted it it was like so everyone was like going in and finding like Honestly. oh there's and just finding ridiculous stuff when it was just sat there all along and that was what people thought it was instantly but because taylor said oh no one's found it um so i think that this is definitely during the this love release she would have been in the process of making midnights 100 percent. yeah yeah Um, there's a lot of people speaking about a lot of easter eggs at the moment like you know we we missed this from a year and a half ago where she mentioned that and i i can't get behind them but when you mentioned this one to me i was like yeah i can get behind that because she's done it previously i think it was during the love era she posted something and and um wrote me in all caps as well yeah um so i i can get behind this one the time frame works out like you said it was at the beginning beginning of summer she would have been working on midnights for sure so yeah i i can get behind this one and it's that they are blatantly obvious but at the same time kind of do go unnoticed until afterwards and Mm. you go oh my god look at that um they're not like the levels that we go to sometimes is swifty count you know counting i don't know every uh, stars on the back of a of a photo and exactly, analyzing yeah. the, the one that i would never forget is the you need to come down cake where people like counted yeah which is fun the, it's it's what they called um sm- like the sprinkles right. 
And it's just like, Taylor is not counting how many sprinkles are in a photo no. or Instagram caption. Like, yeah. she's just not doing it. Uh, it, it. It's fun, and I don't blame people for doing it, and people like to clown. I do as well most of the time. Like, I'll, I'll get behind things, and then I'll kind of sit down and go, okay, right. She wasn't hinting at, at Folklore and Evermore in the lover house. She really wasn't. It's just coincidental that the colour schemes kind of fit. But, yeah. you know, I, I get it, I get it. But definitely this one I do feel is a real one, for sure. Oh, definitely, yeah. I definitely do. I think it's on purpose. And talking about Instagram, another one is that her Instagram feed has kind of started to change up a little bit in terms of kind of colour. There was a kind of move towards more kind of bluey, yeah. kind of brownie tones. But again, it's not... I don't really think that was overly intentional, but it's just an interesting kind of... Because she has done that before where she's clearly changed the Instagram, you know, from the reputation era. She then made it very more colourful into Lover. Yes. And then kind of died it down during the, like, early 2020. Not, I don't think this was necessarily intentional, but she died it down to more browns and stuff with um, the kind of Vogue photo shoot. Then obviously she did the not a lot going on at the moment, which obviously she knew at the time was the mm. folklore and evermore. Um, but that's quite an interesting note. But one of the misty stories that I generally can get behind is the track 10 um lyric covers on both fearless taylor's version and red taylor's version um so it's for the way i loved you and then the last time right and the track 10 cover for fearless is like a clock mm -hmm. and then the track 10 cover for red taylor's version is a flame and i gen i either that is a massive coincidence <sighs> Um, which I think it could be a massive, massive, massive coincidence. I know. It's funny, potential. though. It's When things line up so much like that, you do sometimes kind of question yourself, like, is Taylor a wizard? Like, how does she know? because yeah, she would have to have known during Fearless. 2021. Exactly. Yeah. But maybe she, she was, did. That she was creating an album. Because maybe she did. Both of maybe us, she did because to be... this year, we really questioned ourselves a lot of the time. Like, our first episode this year was our Reputation Vault episode, where we go through, like, what we what could be on the Reputation Vault and what she might do for Reputation Taylor's version. And we were speaking about, like, what might come next. And it's funny, because I think we both mentioned, like, it's Taylor. She might do something completely different. And here we are. Mm. So for how long might she have known that she wanted to pull away to do something like this at the end of the year and have this and maybe she had this concept in her head already and so she was starting to craft songs for it it's so it's so, so yeah, crazy how they're know, both track is... 10 though that's what gets me yeah they are but i'm not sure whether it's just you know overexcited swifties trying to find maybe an easter egg in absolutely everything it's fun but it's still an interesting point the one that i generally can get behind is the this love midnight spaced out like that is just so obvious i generally think that's really clear and and is in a time frame that meant that this would have midnights would have been something that was actively being produced written yeah, made i agree that um however during fearless i'm not too sure it's such a long time and also i'm not and i'm not sure how much control taylor would have over lyric video covers right i don't think that's necessarily something that she's signing off or deciding you know i think that's probably something that's done externally within Taylor Nation and her management that choose stuff or are left up to graphic designers. Yeah. So I'm not too sure about that one. But it's just an interesting note because For sure. weirdly it is like Sometimes it's like that with Taylor. Perfect. Things just work Perfect, out for yeah. her. And they're just like, okay. So it, it kinda makes it look like you've hinted at this from like four years ago, but it works out. So it's cool. The last thing that we wanted to speak about isn't really a missed easter egg or a rumour, but it's just an interesting thing that's going on at the moment. There's 12 songs that appear as Spotify canvases um, when you go on to listen to any of Taylor's songs at the moment on Spotify, and they all mention lyrics regarding midnight or the middle of the night or sleepless nights, things like that basically. So I'm going to list off the lyrics shown and then we can kind of discuss them. Maybe this is a hint to... I mean, I guess it is a hint to what we can expect from the album, but to what extent? So the 12 are, firstly, we have Treacherous, Two Headlights Shine Through the Sleepless Night. Then we have Style, Midnight, You Come and Pick Me Up, No Headlights. From Hoax, we have My Twisted Knife, My Sleepless Night, My Winless Fight. From Happiness, we have From the Dress I Wore at Midnight, Leave It All Behind. All Too Well gives us Because There We Are Again in the Middle of the Night. From 22, we have It Feels Like a Perfect Night for Breakfast at Midnight. From New Year's Day, we've got I Want Your Midnights. From The Archer, I Wake in the Night, I Pace Like a Ghost. 
From the last great American dynasty, we have They Say She Was Seen On Occasion, Pacing the Rock, Staring Out at the Midnight Sea. And finally, from My Tears Ricochet, we have And When You Can't Sleep At Night, You Hear My Stolen Lullabies. What gets to me is that there's 12 and not 13. I'm sure she could have pulled one out from somewhere. Because weirdly, there is technically 13, because nothing news lyric... And I wake up in the middle of the night. It's like I can feel time moving. That's the middle of the night. That's midnight. And it fits so perfectly. I, I yeah, went through the songs. Maybe I missed it. If you guys find it, let me let us know. But I did go through them all. And then I found a list online that another person had done it. And it all coincided. So it seems like they was 12. But honestly, they should be 13. And that nothing new lyric should also be there. Yeah. And technically, I know this isn't a lyric, mm. but the daylight right at the end, the voice note that says, I want to be defined by things that I love, yes. the things that haunt me in the middle of the night. Yes. That's another lyric. Well, not lyric, but, you know, mention of midnight in a total of song. Um, so it's interesting how that is such a recurring theme. I know. We often talk, especially when we do album retrospectives, and even when we did our songs that belong on other albums, it really made you think of recurring themes that go throughout Taylor's kind of discography and midnights and early nights and late nights she's just um, not sleeping yeah a, a, like a constant recurring theme like the 3 a.m 2 a.m 4 a.m that's why this midnight. album is it's so swiftian it's like it's, it's the pinnacle yeah, it's of just, taylor it's the most taylor swift thing ever yeah to have an album about like the middle of the night because basically across her entire discography middle of the night is something that is referenced like i said these are hinting towards the like the lyrical kind of content we're gonna be getting which is great because mm. they're very varied and it just goes to show you don't always have to speak about something sad that is going on it's At keeping you away yeah, even mm. even in the like announcement caption there was a suggestion that you know that it's kind of sadness and you know there's good midnights and bad ones so yeah because sometimes i just always assume that they're bad yeah like <laughs> it's gonna be like two exactly so i'm new year's day i am glad that she's style. given us this little like mini playlist of midnights where she was awake you know because it, it mm. points to the fact that we're gonna get a mix and i do think we're gonna get a mix along with these canvases with these lyrics on them there's also visuals in the background which i thought i'd also just mention because they kind of build up on the aesthetic of the midnight's era so we have cloudy skies with lightning skies in general fireworks uh stars wet streets with cars like passing by and the lights reflecting on the ground glitter falling a train carriage confetti or snow falling down the sun setting over the sea uh, trees and like the sky at night in the background burning lights like in blue or yellow lights in general clouds the moon and finally sparklers so again everything is very night timey which makes sense yes but i loved all the vi visuals and if if you do want to go check them out on spotify i do highly recommend because it's just a nice thing to see in the background that is promoting midnights and kind of gives us an insight into what the lyric videos might look like for example yes Yes, I do agree with that. I do think that they, that is a reference to possible lyric videos and content in general. Like what the songs, you know what I mean, like might be mentioning, mm. um, you know, like with the ocean and things like that and the sky. And I don't know, I just feel like it does seem very intentional. To round things off, the last thing that we can discuss here, which again is a bit of a stretch, but nonetheless, it is a visual that we've had this era. When Taylor announced the Midnight's album and then kind of did a countdown to Midnight, I missed this. You actually saw it in real time, which is so cool. Yeah. But there was a clock that count was counting down to Midnight on her official website. And the numbers were all coloured in different colours. So we have a portion of numbers that are in blue, a portion that are in like a brown colour, a portion like in an orangey colour, and a portion in green, which at that point we kind of all just missed. But now we know that they all correspond to the different special editions colours. Yeah. However, the 12 right at the top is completely white, and it's the only number that is white. Do you think this means that there's a deluxe edition that's white? What do you oh, think I it's about? I just think it's because of Midnight. Yeah. <laughs> I just really think it's that. Here's I me think it's thinking it's something big. Yeah. But, yeah. Because I, 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 the others, oh yeah, 100%, that's all the different colours of the album. That makes total sense. Yeah. But I just think that it's purely just to make it stand out. 
Christmas midnight. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's really boring. <laughs> and I wish I could sit here and go, oh, yeah, it's this, it's that. But I know. I'm going to be really dull. No, so I, I think, it's... think it's... It was a, just to stand out the 12. I think it's realistic, honestly. Um, mm. Yeah. One thing, though, just quickly to mention that I do find quite interesting is that even though the aesthetic, so I mentioned these colours and covers, is very 70s and mm. is a very, like, stripy and brown, mm. you know, kind of slightly muted... The appearances for Midnight's, you know, VMAs, both the VMAs outfit, the after party, and the recent TIFF awards outfit party, I think actually clash with... It's a big contrast, the... isn't it? It's like... Yeah, because that gives me Hollywood glamour, vintage Hollywood glamour, showgirl, which isn't... I don't know, like, it's interesting, because it, I love both of the aesthetics, but personally, mm. I feel like they're very, very different. It is, because... And again, it leads me to believe, like... I know that in the previous episode, I kind of mentioned how maybe the album was like a side A, side B purposefully divided. But now I'm yeah. I'm thinking that the track list was just like side A, side B, because that's literally pointing to the vinyl, how it's going to be, you know, distributed. But I do think there's going to be two sides to the album nonetheless, where there's going to be mm. one, maybe not clear cut sides, maybe more of like a reputation kind of thing, where there is yeah. like two stories going on. Um, where one is much more showy and much more glam, if you will, like yeah, like the party middle of the night, like the twenty-two exactly. middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the other one is going to be perhaps much more muted, and you know, you're alone in the middle of the night, and it... yeah, the, sl- the proper sleepless, but not yeah. in a good way, in a kind of because torment. Way. It is really. I'm glad you mentioned that because the contrast is so vast. Like you look at the the photo shoot for this era, and it's so like devastating like she looks absolutely mm. troubled in all of the photos yeah. and then you look at her like in all of these appearances and she's glammed Gold out like she's got fake nails like, on like yeah exactly with like these yeah long nails and then like this like diamond rope thing wrapped around her and then this like mm. starry night with like a fluffy coat you know i mean yeah it's very different which i find really interesting because it's such a contrast because the photo shoot is not giving that and that's not it, they seem to contrast, but in a weird way, make sense. I know that's yeah, really strange. Yeah, it is. But they all work together really very... well, and I'm mm. loving the the color, the color schemes and the themes, like the muted oh, colors, too. the the dark night colors, the stripes. I'm loving all the stripes. I have to say, this is the probably t-shirts. one of my favorite aesthetics and color schemes. So far, definitely for a, oh, in all time. Yeah, like red carpet appearances, some of Taylor's best so far. I know she only had three. Mm. Um, but the TIFF Awards one is incredible. That's my favourite out of the three so far. Yep. Then the VMAs uh, after party one is my second favourite. And then the actual VMAs. Agreed. One. Agreed. Um, but I do think they're just all so fun. They're just nothing like we've ever really seen Taylor in. And it just really suit her. She looks so good and really confident. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's really exciting. And it's interesting uh, because she's very clearly crafted... There's an aesthetic that's been very, very distinctly crafted, like what Taylor always does. She, mm. It's always on purpose, the aesthetics and stuff. But it's an interesting one because it's not, like nothing we've really seen before. But um, but it's but it's slightly contrasting. Um, the kind of whereas like when you think of like the 1989 era, like the it was all crop tops and short yeah, skirts. it all stuff, kind of fit together. Photo shoot, mm, exactly. Like that was the photo shoot, and then that ran throughout the entire era, including you know red carpets. Whereas this. The photo shoot seems, yeah, just this kind of very sad, someone that looks like tormented yeah. and in the middle of the night, like, you know, and then and then you've got this like showgirl rocking up all these performances in gold and silver. So then it's an interesting contrast. So like you said, I think it will possibly, it's possibly referencing the very different types of midnights, you know, the kind of showy, fun party midnights and then the ones where you're just up all night, mm. you know, kind of in regret and sadness and, yeah because yeah, that, that's what the covers that's what the covers seem that's to what they well, yeah like, they they are yeah and again since we have contemplating life yeah, yeah since we have no musical reference for now this is all we can really go base but up, base ourselves off of um so i can't wait to have something like i said i I hope we do get a single. I won't mind if it's like a complete release on the day thing, but I do. I am hoping so much. I just love getting this. I just love the the rollout, just the excitement. Yeah, definitely. Getting singles and promo singles and performances. It just it just makes it feel more. I don't know. It just makes it 
era just feel a little bit longer and more exciting and i do possibly feel like she's going to do that i think because, she's gearing up um, i think she wanted to really get not get them out of the way but uh shed the spotlight on all too well without shedding it too far onto midnight so especially at these last mm-hmm. couple of events the the tiff award uh the tiff film festival sorry um was very important to her because all too well the project of the short film is being very very highly praised and right, rightfully so yeah. and she's really proud of and that and of, I'm, I'm glad she is yeah and really trying to ground herself as a legitimate director yeah that isn't just a musician that decided to hold the camera yeah. rather than be in front of it yeah yeah so yeah i think yeah she's really trying to she knows what she's doing show a she's, really professional yeah opening yeah. doors for she's, herself like the fact that she, the fact that she's referencing films across you know all sorts of decades, genres, yeah. decades um because you know she's clearly researched and really really thought about it isn't just oh i basically just decided to film this one you mm. know? Mm. and it's being received quite well it's like she's really showing that there was thought and effort um and research put into the you know making of that and she's really kind of grounding herself as a legitimate you know director i suppose to round it off now that we've spoken about all of the rumors going around everything that we know uh, which is quite a lot considering we know nothing uh but the yeah. things that we do know and the easter egg that we may have missed what is the next thing that you want to see from her right now what is your like i want to see i want to see a i want to have a magazine photo shoot and interview yes because they always tell you more than you think yes i because do as you well you read it and you're like oh i didn't really get anything from that then the album comes out and you're like oh my god that woman was hinting to everything yes i do as <laughs> so well I, I really want a profile a yeah i i want her to give yeah. just a really great because she's In the depth. way that she explains everything related to her craft is so interesting always and i mm. i really really do want to get a glimpse into it i want you know like during the love era when she did the rolling stone yes where she literally talked about everything i love that yeah i want something that i really want something like that that kind of interview um i would really really love that's that's what i would hope next and then it can add to the aesthetic a bit more the photo shoot and work out for sure and then maybe we'll have some actual information (laughs) yeah hopefully yeah and obviously the next big thing would obviously be a single yeah yeah but in terms but, but other things would definitely be yeah like a magazine photo shoot and a proper interview not just like you know a small little write-up i want like a proper mm. interview mm, for sure, <laughs> you know, for like sure. i want pages yeah to i want to read <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly i want a novel of an interview so no, that that is hopefully what we get next i hope so i hope so so at the moment this is all we've got and it's all we really want to talk about right now midnights is the topic of the moment but we will be doing other things shortly we will be going we'll be going into midnight's theories and stuff as well and all, as always reacting if that single comes out whenever it comes out you can expect a reaction from us and a breakdown but um yeah we were really excited to speak about these tiny details because they are things that can easily be looked over and you know people don't realize them but with the excitement of it all we really wanted to go in depth and just have a, a nice little chat about everything she's been up to because it's a really exciting time we haven't had a proper rollout for an era in such a long time so we're really reveling in it as always thank you very much for listening If you did enjoy this episode, make sure to give it a thumbs up on YouTube and subscribe if you haven't yet over there as well. If you're listening on Spotify or Apple Music or any other platform, then please rate us if you did enjoy and we'll speak soon. (laughs) 